International Airport. You are looking live here uh, where the president is expected to land any moment. Uh, Air Force One touching down here. President Trump, of course, we've been talking about it all morning. He is in town. He has a busy day lined up. The president will first head to the headquarters of U.S. Southern Command in Doral. Following that, he is scheduled to hold a roundtable with Venezuelan dissidents. And then later in the day, a private fundraiser at a residence in Hillsborough Beach. We want to bring in CBS 4's Jim DeFeedy now into the conversation. Jim, uh, he is joining us live from home. And Jim, what is going on right now? Who are these people we're seeing, the people who are expected to be greeting the president? Um, well, I think you're going to have basically a contingent from uh, South Florida. I would expect some of the elected officials. I can't sort of see who's there right yet, but I would imagine that the county mayor, I think I saw uh, County Commissioner Bovo, who's running for county mayor. I think I saw him on the tarmac. You see they're all wearing masks, which is part of Miami-Dade's mandate, is that you're supposed to be wearing a mask. I would not expect to see the president wearing a mask when he gets off the plane. So we'll see how that takes place. But look, the broader context of this, this is an amazing moment that we're seeing here. To have the president of the United States fly into Florida on a day when we have 11,433 new coronavirus cases, and the object of the visit is a fundraiser, that's the principal reason, is to come for the fundraiser later this afternoon, but to also then talk about Venezuela and narco trafficking, and to not talk about the coronavirus situation here in Florida is truly remarkable. And it's one of the real challenges that the Trump campaign has as they're trying to move forward through this campaign is that this disconnect, while he's trying to move past the coronavirus, issue and move on to other things like stirring up the vote of the Venezuelan community, which he'll need to be able to win Florida. But to try to ignore what's going on with the coronavirus, I think offers a real disconnect and is a problem that voters are having with the, the president right now and why you see him getting very poor grades from the public in terms of his handling the coronavirus. Yeah, and Jim, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be looking to see if he's wearing a mask as soon as he steps off this plane. Uh, he has said that he'll likely wear a mask during a visit to the Walter Reed Medical Center tomorrow. Uh, any idea why he might not wear a mask as early as today, especially coming to South Florida, the epicenter of our state right now with the coronavirus pandemic? He has clearly made it known that he does not like wearing the mask. He thinks the mask makes him look weak. Um, he believes that because he's tested in a regular, on a regular intervals and that those around him are always tested, that, that's a, that, that he doesn't need to wear a mask. But there's also something about moral leadership. By wearing a mask, you would set an example for others that show that it's not a sign of weakness, that it is something positive. Now, he'll have to wear it at Walter Reed because it's a far more difficult situation in that type of crowded setting for him not to wear a mask. So my understanding is, is that basically if he wanted to do the event at Walter Reed, he had to wear a mask and he's agreed to do so. He said that on Sean Hannity's program last night. But again, you know, this, this notion of, of, you know, pushing for the schools to open, that's another issue that he's dealing with. He's, he's basically made it clear that he wants every school to open in the country. He's threatening them by withholding money. And yet here we are in South Florida dealing with this and both school districts, Dade and Broward, very skeptical, unlikely that they're going to open the way that the president wants to. This would have been an opportunity for him to discuss that issue. You know, why isn't the president meeting with frontline health care workers, mm -hmm. with teachers, with school board representatives, those sorts of things which are tangible issues that people are concerned about. I'm not minimizing the issue of Venezuela. That's a very important issue for a large segment of the community down here. But to schedule a trip to South Florida at this time when we are now the nation's hotspot and not deal with the coronavirus just seems like political malpractice and shows a president out of touch with what is going on in the country. You can hope to move past it. You can hope that the coronavirus is going to leave people's minds and that we'll just get used to it. But in South Florida, that is not the case. And that's very much clear during this trip. And that's what's going to be highlighted. And you talk about missed opportunity. You talk about, you know, this timing and the disconnect. I, we, we've already talked a little bit about some of his goal here in the meeting. But what would be a win-win situation for the president to come out of uh, South Florida as he leaves later tonight? Uh, with, a, with a lot of money. You know, this, this is a trip that is 
about his visit to the Southern Command and Venezuelan dissidents meeting with them, but it is also very much about a fundraiser. The Donald Trump campaign has been prolific in terms of their fundraising ability. This $600,000, you know, a table dinner, this, this fundraiser that's going to be held later tonight in Broward, this is not one of your low-end fundraisers. You're going to see millions and millions of dollars being raised out of this event. That is the main thing that he's going to walk out of here with. Now, from a political standpoint as well, he needs to shore up his support among the Hispanic community, within the Venezuelan community. He's got some damage there right now. John Bolton recently wrote a book, the former national security advisor, in which he claims that the president showed some admiration for Maduro, referring to him as a strong leader, and actually disparaged Juan Guaido to a certain extent. You know, referring to him as a kid, and derisively referring to him as well as the Beto O'Rourke of Venezuela. You know, if that's the type of statements that, that, uh, that Bolton claims the president made, you know, again, the White House has denied that. He's uh, said that the books are all lies. So the Venezuelan community wants to hear that directly from the president. But the president stepped in it as well. In an interview last month with Axios, he said he was open to meeting with Maduro, that he was willing to meet with the Venezuelan dictator right now to have conversations with him. That didn't go over very well in the Venezuelan community. So that's something he's going to have to repair. He also has a problem with some of the Cuban community. You know, there was a statement that, uh, that you know, the vice president's press secretary made, Katie Miller, that's been reported in a new book in which she said that, you know, basically that folks who come to this country need to assimilate. And she said, quote, why do we need a little Havana? Well, folks in Little Havana understand why we why Little Havana is so central and so integral. It's no different than why we have a Little Italy, you know, up in New York. I mean, those sorts of things strike at the heart of it. The White House has not denied those comments. Katie Miller has not denied those comments. I spoke to a senior advisor for the Trump campaign earlier this morning, and he refused to, uh, to disavow those comments. But, you know, again, when you've got statements like that made, Donald Trump needs to shore up his support in the Venezuelan community, in the Cuban community, if he hopes to win Florida, and Florida is key. When I interviewed uh, Donald Trump's campaign manager, the campaign manager, Brad Parscale, last year, he said Florida is do or die. Florida is must win. There is no path for Donald Trump to win re-election if he does not win Florida. So I think you're going to see the president flying into Florida quite often. It's why we're going to see the Republican National Convention in Florida. And I think that those are major things. So this trip is part of that political thing. But make no mistake, this trip is about the money he's going to raise later today in Broward County. It's like we just got a peek of the president there. He has not yet come out. Uh, he is going to the U.S. Southern Command and Doral first. That's where we just saw Joan. Uh, we saw a lot of supporters there, no protesters, although that's been discussed as well. Do you think there's going to be some opposition there later on today as well? Uh, could be, but again, it's, it's Miami in the summer. You know, uh, folks spending a lot of time outside in the heat and humidity. Uh, I'm not so sure, which raises another interesting question. You know, the Republican National Convention is slated to be held in Jacksonville coming up, you know, in, in from, uh, August 23rd to the 27th, I believe are the dates. And there's now talk of moving it from an indoor arena to some outdoor stadiums. I did a quick check of previous years, what the temperature and the, the weather was like in Jacksonville outside. The average temperature highs were around 93, 94 degrees, 90 percent humidity. There were some days with two and a half inches of rain. So I'm not sure being outdoors in Jacksonville is necessarily the best thing. And I know we're seeing the president now come down the stairs and, of course, mm -hmm. no mask. Yeah, as you predicted, Jim, he is not wearing a mask. Uh, again, he is heading to the U.S. Southern Command and Doral first. That's where we have CBS4's Joe Murray. Uh, any idea of how that's going to go, Jim? Uh, we mentioned some of his goals, but if you can break down exactly how this will go, what he'll be talking about, uh, we know he'll also be holding a roundtable later with Venezuelan dissidents. Well, the U.S. Southern Command trip is to get a briefing on narco-trafficking, and again, that will tie into, Pennsylvania, uh, into Venezuela. 
there is a growing concern that Venezuela has turned into a narco state, that you're seeing a lot of narco trafficking move through um, Latin America, through Venezuela, you know, into, into the United States. So I think that's going to be one of the focal points. Now, one of the things that I think is interesting about the picture that we're seeing on our, our screens right now, you saw the White House Chief of Staff, Mark Meadows, is there. But who's not there? Who's not there is Governor. The Governor Ron DeSantis. This is one of the few times I think the president has come to Florida where Governor Ron DeSantis was not there to greet him. And there's been some reporting that there may be some tension between the president and the governor. The president recently reinstalled a, a campaign aide to run his operation in Florida, a woman by the name of Susie Miles. Susie Miles is someone who does not get along with Governor Ron DeSantis. Governor Ron DeSantis basically fired her as the head of the Republican Party, you know, and running things in the state of Florida. Donald Trump fearing about his numbers because the latest polls have Donald Trump losing to Joe Biden in Florida. The real clear politics average of polls shows that Biden is ahead of Donald Trump in the state of Florida by five points so that you can expect that she's coming in and there's some tension and there's been some reporting in the New York Times that DeSantis has not been helping with fundraising for the convention. I will also note that I think I see uh, Mario diaz Bolart there. I don't see him wearing a mask. He recently had uh, COVID-19, as you know, and survived that well. And so it, this is an interesting event. This works on many layers, as often every presidential event does. All right, Jim, thank you so much for your insight and context as always. Of course, the important things you pointed out, the president not wearing a mask, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is not here. We will be continuing our coverage of the president's uh, visit here in South Florida. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back.